sometimes it doesn't take very much. That's just what's so magical about this, is if we just think about where those opportunities are, and they're in every community. And if we could stop thinking about high school as four walls and 55 minute blocks a period of time, just imagine what our last few years in our system could be for students. When students are asked when they're teenagers, you know, are there adults in this community working on behalf of the future of that community? And they say no. They're much more likely to leave and not have any plans to come back. Whereas if they see activity by adults and or their peers working on a better Main Street, working on bringing business to town, working on these, these partnerships and relationships with entrepreneurial skills and so forth, then they are actually more likely to say, yeah, this, this could be a possibility in seven, eight years. I might go away to school, but I might then come back. This program is a TPT Partnerships co-production with the Regional Educational Laboratory Midwest, putting research into action. Funding has been provided by the Institute of Education Sciences. I think that rural means that you're in a community where there's, you know, vast spaces between where people live. It could be a long commute to the school, for example. But beyond that, rural can be really different. Um, and I think that we really need to start mapping that out and looking at what those opportunities really are in that space. Oh, I think there's probably two broad definitions that are typically used. That you're X number of miles from a larger urban center and small population remotely located. That's kind of the technical definition. But there's another one that gets used frequently, and that's more the, the mental state. It's more the emotional state of being rural. That's a proud of self-reliance, pride in your local community. Everyone knows each other's neighbor and so forth. And you often hear these used interchangeably. For the purposes of our educational systems, we know that approximately half of our students come from greater Minnesota or rural communities. Career readiness is a combination of possessing the academic knowledge, employability skills, as well as an understanding of the workplace and bringing that together in a meaningful way to demonstrate that you are prepared for work. There's a lot of ways in which you can get at career-ready skills. Um, there's opportunities within your traditional academic standards to embed skills that you can acquire in the workplace, so things like verbal communication and eye contact are all critical pieces. Um, and in some ways, having opportunities outside of the classroom and exercising the skills that you've learned really provide that positive feedback loop that can reinforce the skills that the student's learning and is honing over time so that they become much more confident. Okay. What I'm offering is lawn care service. Like the way in which career ready is spoken about more broadly may not always be applicable in the rural settings. The amount of those career options is more limited in smaller communities. So when we talk about career development and giving students a taste and experience in different careers, it's very challenging for them to do that when they don't have a staff that could cover all of those. So some of the communities have actually begun to think about and have started collaborating amongst themselves. It requires a little bit of creativity and a different model, perhaps. Rural communities face a singular challenge of people, of trying to maintain their population. It's very common for people to grow up and leave their hometown and so you typically get this challenge of trying to maintain a population in rural areas. Linked to that is this notion of the huge burden of taxes. And as you get a smaller population, you get fewer houses on the tax roll, you get fewer properties, you know, fewer people paying into the income tax and so forth. You get a greater tax burden on those left behind. And that creates great burdens for local government, great burdens for schools to try to maintain the program in light of the fewer people to pay those taxes. And that links then into the other third issue, and that is the challenge of, of a changing economy in the economy of the 21st century, the digital economy, the, te the technical economy, and moving away from the old jobs that existed in many rural areas, which no longer, no longer exist. The old industrial jobs, the factory jobs, the mining jobs, the lumber jobs, those have become so automated or the mines have shut down 
that you really get a challenge on where people can work in these rural areas. Understanding the skills necessary to be successful in the workplace is important. And the reason for that is the uncertainty. There's a significant amount of uncertainty in terms of what kinds of jobs will be available to students after they graduate. There's estimates that approximately two thirds of the jobs that students will have in the future have not yet been created. So how do you prepare a student for that kind of environment? One of the solutions that education has come up with is this idea of employability skills, which are those types of skills that are transferable to multiple settings and will allow a student to access the training and opportunities they need in the future, and also be able to use this common set of skills within their toolbox in the, you know, the unknown setting of the future. Almost every place we go, there are employers saying, we need employees, we are hiring, we're looking for someone who is willing to work, someone who has some soft skills. We don't even care if they have the skill that, that they need to do the job, we can train them to do that, but we need someone who is willing to show up in the morning and can take some direction and, and uh, will handle constructive criticism and, and is motivated to do a good job. It's really in a best interest of a business to work closely with their high school um, and with workforce partners just to let people know about opportunities. We hear so often that students don't know what's available in their backyards. They don't know that down the street they could get employed in a certain position. And so the more that businesses are involved and can provide those opportunities for students, um, I think It'll be better for them in the future workforce. Uh, when they're looking for employees, it'll be better for students so that they know where the opportunities are and they can come home to uh, and stay in their communities. We are at Moscone's, which is a restaurant in Verndale, Minnesota, which sits between Staples and Wadena. This is the culminating event for this year's class. For the last half of the school year, they've been working on their individual businesses, and they are showcasing those businesses today for the public. Central Minnesota CEO is a collaborative effort between Staples Motley High School, Wadena Deer Creek High School, uh, Burndale High School, and now next year we're, we're adding another high school, Sabika High School will be part of this group too. What CEO is, at its most basic level, is economic development. Okay? It is not an educational program, though there's a lot of education that takes place during CEO. Well, this is a wonderful example of how a community can really invest, and I think that's the proper word, invest in their, in their children and the future of, the, of, their, of their community. It was devised as a way to help rural communities keep their kids okay, in their communities. And we've all heard of the brain drain, you know, where small communities have their best and brightest that go off to, to bigger metropolitan areas in search of, of good paying jobs. This kind of investment where you're really creating uh, deep roots and deep, you know, rich connections between local business leaders and the students is really important because these students can then see that there is a future in this community. There are job opportunities. These are the skills I need to prepare myself for. I'm Mitchell Heyman and I'm a uh, student of the CEO class. I'm a senior at Wadena Deer Creek. My business is Met Productions. It's a video and editing service I do, whether uh, someone has an event going on or if they need something recorded or just whatever they need done. That, that these students are seeing. I've been really interested in a lot of this stuff since I was like 12. That's when I first got my first camera and started messing around with things like that. So ever since then, it just kind of became a hobby of mine and I thought, well, I might as well make it into a business. Part of the philosophy for the CEO class is that students will always be hosted in a business, never in a school. 
Yeah, I look around at the different businesses or people that I met with and I would know like, oh, I know what happens there now or I know who this guy is and I never would have known or talked to them without CEO. It takes the community for us to have CEO. Those investors fund the program, pays for my salary, pays for other things that we're doing and that advisory board volunteers their time and energy to determine how we best are going to make CEO work in central Minnesota. So without the investors, without the advisory board, without the mentors, the CEO doesn't exist. And that without those partnerships, without that community investment and partnership with the school, it's really hard for students to see what those, what those opportunities are. And students will often argue, will often state that, oh, there's no jobs in our local community, so I need to go elsewhere to find a job. And at the same time, you get local business leaders saying, we can't find any, any employees here. And you've got to, you know, these kinds of relationships can go a long ways toward ensuring that that conversation doesn't happen. We don't want them to feel like they're in a typical academic school setting where there are tests and you're taking notes and you're doing quizzes and that type of thing. Everything that we do has some relevance to them. They have a reason for doing it. They never have to ask the question, you know, what am I going to use this for? Making the learning very relevant for these young students is, is paramount. If it's not relevant to their world, if it's not relevant to their future employment, not relevant to their community, the students are more likely to check out and not really engage in that, in that subject matter. And so we've seen this a fair amount with the recent standards movement over the last 10, 15 years, where we've ratcheted up the standards of expectations of, of the rigor of a, of a high school education, even an elementary education. But the kids haven't responded with, with equal levels of engagement. And I think because what we're seeing is that the kids don't quite see the relevance of this heightened level of, 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 of rigor. And so if the teachers and the administration and the community can partner together to show the relevance of this, of having a higher level of um, reading skills and mathematic skills and technical skills and so forth, um, then there's, there's a direct path to, the, to a brighter future in that community. It's definitely worth it because you learn a lot of these social skills, a lot of uh, business skills. I can talk to people like adults easier now. Before I was very intimidated. A year ago, I could not straight up go to you and tell you my name and shake your hand, look you in the eyes and say, this is who I am. But now you learn that through the program. You change so much from just when you start to the end of the year. They spend time practicing small talk with people they don't know. All of those things that people in the business world do all the time. And seeing these young people at the beginning of the year when, you know, plenty of them are a little shy and a little reserved. And then when we get to this point at the end of the school year at this trade show and you see how they engage with adults easily, it's really rewarding for me as a school superintendent and part of the CEO board to see that. So we call them employability skills because they are what make or break your success. Just being able to have a dialogue and a conversation where you're, you know, seeing a student who comes up to you confidently has some skills in how to connect without even knowing you is one of the most important communication skills anyone can have in any career. So yes, that doesn't seem to come naturally and I think it's probably getting harder and harder for us to teach that because students rely so much on technology to communicate even with each other that maybe they aren't practicing that as much, so we have to intentionally practice that. The main reason that I'm so supportive of this program is because as my role as economic developer for the city of Wadena, I see it all the time where people are smokestack chasing, you know, they're, they're going out trying to recruit businesses from, from other places or bringing new business into town, and that's great, that's good. If, if, if that happens and it's successful and it's a, a long-lasting uh, relationship, that's great. But we see most of our success in Wadena by homegrown individuals that start businesses. People that have roots will stick around, 
they'll start businesses, they'll grow those businesses, employ more people, and so that, that's my area of focus is to really try to work with the individuals from the area and there's no better way to start than with high school students that have an interest in being an entrepreneur. I'm at the University of Minnesota Duluth and I'm studying entrepreneurship. I learned so much from the CEO class that in my classes in college I'm able to apply it and it's easier to learn. That's nice because then they're in their surroundings yeah. and they're not I remember coming in wanting to be an architect and then finding out that my passion was dogs and business and that I could combine the two and I was really, really excited for my future after that. There's a wonderful study done by our, my colleague High Shaft and a, a couple of colleagues of his that is trying to get this question of which students are most, most likely to want to stay in a community and which students are most likely to want to leave a community. And what they found was that the students with the strongest ties to their local community were the highest achieving students. They're the ones who've had all the success. And they have these great skills and these great motivations and the great love of their community. And yet, when asked why they stayed in their community or left their community, it came back to their, the economic opportunities. And when they see economic opportunities, they're much more likely to stay. And so these partnerships, where these students can really see for themselves the type of work that exists, I can see whether I, I like that work or not, whether I like to be treated like this in my community, and I see there's a future for that. The research literature says they're much more, more likely to either stay, or if they move away to go to school, they're more likely to come back. If we can encourage our young, enthusiastic, highly motivated young adults to see that there's a future here, they know that they've got this connection, this network of people that is behind them and would like them to come back here. Because if our small towns don't have young, enthusiastic, motivated business people to come back, they are going to be senior citizen communities. Where I would love to be is that no compromise on the level and rigor of core content but that it's integrated into real experiences. So the student is spending at least as much time out in the real world as they are in a classroom per se. However that looks and in whatever areas, whether it's the arts, just think of how much you could learn learning inside of a museum. Just imagine that. Or for example, learning inside the career field of sports. You could learn anything. So if there was a time when the students were hands-on applying their learning into areas they were interested in, whether it's gonna be their career or not, if we could have that for every child in this state, that would be the best education we could offer. When you think about high school students and you look at engagement, engagement's a really critical piece for success in the academic setting. It's also critical for success in the workplace. And the being career ready or getting experiences that are hands-on, experiential, or in a workplace, for example, really allow students to see why these skills are very important and you know, keep them engaged in a new way because they can see application for the skills in the real world. The power of place, there is power in place. We have something called Scrubs Camp and the students are not only encircled with faculty in, in those fields, but also in the environment, in those environments where they're actually seeing the equipment, experiencing the equipment on a college campus or in a hospital setting. That's hugely motivating for a student. Um, both procedure rooms. Um, and one thing you'll notice from the campers is that they're all in scrubs. So even the fact of wearing scrubs, it puts them kind of in the place of someone who works in that field. And you can tell their confidence as they put those scrubs on. Everybody's shoulders lift and they can see themselves in those careers when they're wearing it, when they're doing it, and when they're in the environment. 
We want to see them uh, get excited about a career and once they've done that, then we can say, okay, now that you liked that, this is what you should do next. Go back to your school counselor or take these classes when you go back and register for fall. My name's Phoebe Logie. I go to Blue Earth Area High School. I'm going into 10th grade. This last year, I had algebra, English, physical science, and I took some child development classes and family relationship classes. Well, the first day, we kind of toured the building at MSU. We got to see the simulation lab, which was really cool. That was probably my favorite part, and like the dental area, which made me really interested in that. I wasn't before, but it was really fun. There's definitely some things we've learned about that I'm like, it's not very interesting to me. And then there's some things that were really interesting, like surprisingly interesting. So I'll definitely take that into consideration when I'm trying to decide like what I want to do someday. I still would rather be like a OB or a labor and delivery nurse or something, but it's the dental was stuff was very interesting. Something that I didn't think I would like. Scrubs Camp is all about not just talking to students about it, but having them touch the tools, use the tools. Um, they are engaging in the activities. We got to do a lot of hands-on stuff, which introduced me to so many parts of the medical field that I didn't even know existed. A kid will never desire to engage in a certain type of training or engage for, you know, plan for a certain job if they don't know that job exists. It's not that you know, it sounds simple, <laughs> it is simple. And so this exposure, broadening the exposure, of what, what, what are the possibilities for work? What are the possibilities for for skill development yeah, so in your region. You know, what is even a, a possibility? Good. Good. Thanks, guys. We know we need a strong pipeline of future healthcare workers. And so one of the things that we do is reach into middle school and high school. And so this camp was a high school camp. And we do that so that kids get to experience being on a college campus, being in a healthcare setting. They get to experience other jobs besides maybe doctors and nurses, which are important jobs and we absolutely love it when that's what kids want to do, but there are so many other jobs in the healthcare field that people don't think about. Most people, I think when you think of healthcare, you think hospitals and clinics. Well, if you're working in healthcare, you can work in long-term care, home health, mental health, oral health. You can work for researchers, you can work for insurance companies, and most people don't think about that. And so we're trying to plant those little seeds in the, the high schoolers' minds. Going into Scrubs Camp, I knew I wanted to do something in the medical field, but I had no idea what. And by going to Scrubs Camp, I definitely figured out what's more for me. An ideal career exploration opportunity um, recognizes that not all students are going to pursue that particular career. But for those that are, um, they're making connections between what they're learning and what the courses they need to take and their, you know, what's going on in the classroom and what path they need to take in terms of their education during high school and after high school. And I think this holds for all, all students, all teenagers. You know, why do I need to take this math? When's algebra, when's geometry, when's trigonometry ever gonna help me? And so if you have these ongoing conversations and form a relationship with people who work in a certain sector and they can explain to you on their day-to-day -day work or maybe month-to-month -month work how these skills are relevant, how these skills help you, you focus the mind, how you train in these basic skills or advanced skills, it becomes an inherent motivator. And we see this not just in rural areas, this is across the board. Um, this is why so many college students are pushed to engage in internships these days. It's the same, it's the same thought, thought process, same mechanism. To expose students to the, the requirements for the different jobs that they may be interested in, um, and then that inherently does motivate them. The people here have like showed me a lot about how for this job, like these classes are like required and like this will really help you. And so now instead of being like, why do I have to take chemistry? Like now I know, well, if I want to do this, I'm going to have to take chemistry. Did you feel like you were having to sort of rock? An inspired student comes from a student who's experienced something. It's touched them, it has resonated with something, it's sparked some interest, sparked some desire in them. It's pretty easy after that. You can feed that inspiration and it just creates more and more motivation. We forget often that that's how children learn. I think it's about exposing them to the opportunities. They need to know that in their local communities there's a place for them. Um, 
at any level. So whether they want to do something that's entry level or they want to continue on and be a doctor, that there's so many different levels of opportunities between nursing homes and uh, other healthcare facilities in individual communities that they just need to be aware of those opportunities and know. Uh, they may need to go to other places to get education, but to know that they can come back to those communities and get really good jobs. Just at the heart of things, we care that students see themselves having a place in the world and feeling like they're important and they have something to contribute. That is the essence of this. Whether they find their career in high school is kind of irrelevant. That they actually have the seed inside of them that's growing their dreams and their hopes and their confidence in their future. That's what we want to see. Those are the outcomes we want to see. If it helps the community strengthen their local economy, great. That's just gravy. You know, if it helps them get that job where, you know, they can self-sustain themselves and their family, that's even better. That's really the optimum goal here. It isn't so much about, you know, exactly what they choose, but that they see that that, that is their potential and that's their future. Ready for the Future, Career Preparation in Rural Communities is a TPT Partnerships co-production with the Regional Educational Laboratory Midwest, putting research into action. Funding has been provided by the Institute of Education Sciences.